Yeah, um, sorry, sorry, I was getting situated here. Um, you, you got some almost unprecedented size in your front court this season. Um, how, how do you expect to utilize that, and hope, you know, how will it help you guys? Do you think? Well, one thing that we wanted to address from last year is is kind of paint presence and and our size. Um, you see with teams that are, whether they're winning our league or they're advancing in the NCAA tournament, whichever it is, um, you know, for the most part, their, their paint presence is, is pretty good. So we wanted to get bigger. We wanted to have more size, um, not only just in the paint, but also on our perimeter as well. So um, we, we feel like um, if we can be a, a pretty good defensive team at the rim, that will help us in, in games and, and hopefully winning more than, than uh, our share of games. Just for any of you guys, I mean, what's it like practicing against a couple of seven-footers and a, and a 6'10 guy who's like 275 pounds? Actually, just let me jump in real quick. If, if, uh, if, you're, if you're speaking, just grab the microphone and kind of put it closer to you. Um, to follow up on a question, um, in practice, it's just, it's just different. Um, you know, they're athletic, they're tall. So, you know, going to the rim is not easy, not easy at all in practice. So it gives, it gives us a game feel. Because I, I think we all know um, during the season, there aren't that many bigs you know, that big and athletic. So it, it'll help us out in the long run. I mean, I think just to piggyback off of it, I think them being seven foot, great wingspans, um, I think it allows us to be more creative with our finishes. Um, because I mean, when we get when we get deeper in the tournament, you know we've got guys that are seven foot, great wingspans, can jump up ten feet above. Um, so I think if we're just practicing against it every single day, uh, it not only makes me better as a player, but it makes our team better. Yeah, hand in hand with the size, with size, do you feel like your, your team has more versatility too? Because you're going to talk about some of the combinations and some of the stuff at least in this early part of practice. Yeah, I think we're we're versatile and can play different ways out there on the floor, which which hopefully will be a benefit for us. Um, having bigger wings, um, having size in um, in the post, and I, and I think that will definitely help. Um, you know, in our backcourt, you know, J2 here is about 6'3", 6'4", uh, Dre is about 6'5", and Patrick's 6'9", 6'10", so that definitely helps out on the perimeter. And then if we can and are able to, to play with uh, traditional 6'10 and 6'11 or 7 foot in, in the post. Um, hopefully we create some some disadvantages for our opponents. Um, but then on the flip side, from a defensive standpoint, we have to be really good on the defensive end and, and that size still has to guard um, maybe smaller opponents that we could come up and, and face. Well, you know, I, I'm looking at this gentleman to my to my right, uh, Jordan, who's who's been doing a great job this uh, this summer and fall, and and uh, he's done a great job at the point guard position. And obviously, Donovan had played last year. Uh, we call him Mellow, but but he's done a great job as well. So I think that we're in pretty good position with our with our point guards and and uh, you know guys that can handle the ball. You know, the way that we want to play this year, we'll have multiple ball handlers out there on the floor. So hopefully. Uh, that that creates some some problems if we you know can rebound with those uh, with those guys as well and, and start transition a little bit earlier. Jordan, can you talk a little bit about playing point guard? Did you play point at uh, UTEP at all? And uh, just what's it feel like to be able to actually play this year? I know you went through some injury, a lot of injury stuff last year. Um, yes, I did. I started point guard two years at University of Texas El Paso, and I led the team in assists. Um, both years I was on the team, and. Um, I think just with this year's team and the size we got, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. We got, we're got very versatile, and I think just for me, it's going to be man in the position and being able to stay healthy and be able to be available for my team each and every night. Well, I think a number of things that we've talked about is, um, you know, is is our. I think that hope and hopefully we have a defensive presence that that maybe we didn't have last year. I think that's going to be the first order of business for us to to be successful this year is for us to uh, to do better on the defensive end. Um, you know, grab our share of rebounds, and if we can um, 
you know, if we can, you know, have a lower or defensive field goal percentage, that will allow us to get out on the break a lot, a lot more. So we, we do want to run. We do want to try to get some early baskets if we can. And then, as we've talked about before, I think we have versatility in our half court um, and with the, the players that we have that uh, it, I hope that it becomes very, very difficult for teams to just pick one guy that they have to guard. So, you know, we have guys in, in Dre and Patrick that can score and J2 can score. Um, even Josh Thomas, who averaged about 12 points per game last year, um, you know, he can score as well. So I think we have a, a group that's cons that can be consistent from an offensive standpoint. Um, so hopefully our, our fans will see, um, you know, uh, an increased tempo. Uh, getting the ball up the floor, but also in a half court set, um, you know, from the standpoint of being able to score and shoot and do all those things, um, you know, I think that will be better from that perspective. Pat, were you looking to, um, you guys teams at Florida and Colorado, were you looking to, um, I don't know, toughen up the non conference slate a little bit with the, with the group that you have and, and try to test you guys yourselves early? What, what was the thinking with the scheduling? Well, I think each and every year that we go through this um, this time of the year uh, with teams like that, um, um, it's a given that any team in the SEC or Big Ten or, or Big 12 that we're going to be playing, they're going to be tough. So uh, whether it was Florida or uh, Wisconsin, whom we're not playing, or Marquette, um, it's, it would be a test no matter what. So when we go and play Florida, when we go and play Colorado, um, both of those games are going to be extreme um, it's going to be. It's going to test our will. It's going to test our toughness and and what we're made of. Um, even when Rhode Island comes here, who in the past have been a, a really good tournament team and they perform pretty well in the A10. Um, those are those are pretty good games that we'll play to to start out with. And um, but I look forward to that. I think our guys want that challenge. I think they embrace it. Um, you know, you're looking at at three guys here who are, don't fear. You know, playing against opponents like that. And they're they're looking forward to it. Pat, um, you were you were a recruit that could go anywhere in the country. Um, you chose Milwaukee for obvious reasons. Um, what do you expect now? Because you were, you could have gone to programs that have tremendous expectations every year. What do you expect here now? Um, I try to veer away from the questions that talk about where I could have been, but. I think the expectations here now are still the same. I mean, I expect to come in here, have a big role with the team. Um, I expect to come here and compete every night. Um, I expect to come here and work hard. I expect to come here, be a student athlete, be a role model in the community. So, I mean, my expectations don't change wherever I'm at. Um, I still have the same expectations, just the location is different. How about for the team? What are your expectations based mm -hmm. on what you've experienced here? Yeah, I mean, I think we have all the tools to go far. Um, I think tournament is in our wheelhouse right now. Uh, I think conference champions is in, our, is in our wheelhouse right now. And I think, I mean, we've got all the talent, we've got all the size, we've got all the resources we need here to really go far as a team this year. You spent the last couple of years getting ready for college basketball mm -hmm. for this moment. What, what has the last month been like now that you guys have actually been on the court and mm -hmm. coached up basketball for, for a while? Yeah, so I've actually still been limited about time that I can be on the court um, due to my injuries still. Um, but today will be my first practice, so I'm looking forward to getting out there. So I guess I really can't answer your question because I haven't gone through it. But I mean, right now, I'm just looking forward to getting out there with them and breaking this up with them. Just kind of building on the expectations thing, um, DeAndre and Jordan, do you guys welcome, you know, I'll figure that you guys are going to be picked, you know, easily top three in the conference in the preseason. Do you guys welcome that, uh, that scrutiny? And do you, you know, do you, do you look forward to having those kind of expectations? I think as a team, we definitely do. Um, as a competitor, as a basketball player, there's nothing you can, you know, nothing you can want more but to be, um, I wouldn't say doubted, but you know, bringing somebody in like Pat Patrick Baldwin Jr., the, the noise, the, the crowd, everything, you, you know, you want to be a part of that, you know, and show everybody that you're, that you're good enough, that you belong, and we want to show him and his family that he belongs here, you know, a part of our team, and our team, you know, is good for anything. So I think we are, we do, we do like the challenge. We love it. And from a player standpoint, what are some of, uh, I know we've only been together for a little bit, but what are some of the strengths of the team so far? And then what is something that you think you guys are going to have to work on throughout the year? Uh, 
Um, I think strength-wise, what jumps off the page is, I mean, obviously our size, and that leads to kind of what my dad has talked about some more. And I think we have a good defensive presence. Uh, we've got long guys on the perimeter. So I think we'll be a team that if we're locked in every single night, we can shut down a lot of really good teams. But um, I think overall, we've got some good scores. We've got some versatile scores, uh, good shooters. So I think across the board, we've got each guy that plays a different role for our team um, that fills every different need. But I mean, as a as opposed to what we can do better, I think probably just communication a little bit better, um, defensively bringing every every single night. Um, but I mean, I think overall we're doing pretty good in practice. Um, just from what I've seen on the sideline, I think I'm excited about this group and I'm ready to get started. Patrick, you grew up around this team. What's it like to finally be suiting up and playing mm -hmm. with these guys instead of watching them from the sideline? Yeah, I mean, it's something that um, I reflect on pretty much every time I walk in this gym, um, being that eighth grader going into freshman year. Uh, coming in here for the first time, being some new people. Um, and then finally, four years later, fast forward, getting to come here and put on the jersey and represent my family in this city. Um, so I think it's just something that's super cool, just seeing these guys on TV and seeing what they've been able to do over the past few years. And then now I get to be a part of it. I think it's just something that I embrace, something that I just got to make a part of myself. Patrick, how do you, how do you coach Patrick now? Are you, are you going to be tougher on him? I, I, it's, it's got to be kind of a fine line to walk, doesn't it, as a coach and also a father? Well, I, th I think uh, Patrick can attest that, you know, that I have, other than him, I have 16 um, kind of pseudo sons in our program. And, and I think our other 16 know that the way that I coach and mentor them is the same way that I coach and mentor Patrick. It's, it's no different. To me, it's easy. Um, especially when you have someone like Patrick who, who wants to be coached, who wants to be challenged. Um, it's not difficult at all. Um, and he knows that I have high expectations for him. J2 knows that I have high expectations for him. Dre is the same way. Um, and all of our other guys, they all know that I have high expectations for them and, and our standards and, and what they are. So from, a, from being able to, to coach Patrick and, and be around him, um, that's not going to be that's not going to be hard at all. Um, in fact, he he wants that, and and that's what's truly special about him um, in this scenario. But um, you know, from a father standpoint, just to be around him each and every day, um, as much as and as often as I can, uh, you can't ask for more than that, um, especially in in our role as a as a coach. If you're not in a, if you're in a traditional coaching situation, you don't spend as much time with your family anyway. But to be able to, to be around them um, is, is really good. So um, it's e to me, it's easy. Um, and I, I look forward to the opportunity to, you know, that first opportunity out on the, out on the court to, to really coach him and, and tell him he needs to get through a screen or whatever it is. <laughs> Um, I think to answer it, I mean, there have been times where, you know, he'll say something and I'll kind of roll my eyes. But um, overall, it's just kind of we got to have a business relationship the second we step in between those lines. So I think as a family, when he's my dad at home, uh, we can joke, we can laugh. But when we step between those lines, it's still a personal relationship. But he's also got 16 other guys to coach, and I'm one of them. So I just got to be integrated into the team, and you really just got to treat like a business. Yeah, I think during this time of the year, um, not only with us but other programs as well, you, you're going to deal with some nicks and some bruises, and, and we have our share of it. We've been dinged up a little bit, and um, I think we're rounding the corner where we get most of our guys back on the floor healthy in practice, and, and it couldn't come at a better time as we're getting ready for you know some of our scrimmages and exhibitions, and then you know we tip off on November 9th um, for real um, against North Dakota, and then homecoming on November 13th against Eastern Kentucky. So. Um, yeah, we've we've been banged up, but but now I think we're we're getting close to to having everybody out there on the floor. Uh, Trey, coming off a pretty good year last year, um, what are some of the things that you worked on uh, this offseason that you want to improve on? Um, <clears throat> I think this year, this summer, I really focused on my conditioning the most. Um, last year, I think 
I could have been better at, you know, at the end of games a lot last year. So I think that was a, you know, was due to COVID things, really, the COVID related things last year, of course. So I just wanted to make sure I was in the best shape possible this year, just to be able to give my full potential throughout the entire 40 minutes. Um, and also I worked on just, just trying to be a better player overall, um, better passer, better finisher, just making my reads better and things like that. So I can, I can kind of tell you just overall everything, just trying to get better overall as a player.